ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والكفء والند والنظير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيراته من خلقه وامينه على وحيه ارسله ربه رحمه للعالمين وحجه على العباد اجمعين فهدى الله تعالى به من الضلاله وبصر به من الجهاله وكثر به بعد القله واغنى به بعد العيله ولم به بعد الشتات وامن به بعد الخوف فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله الطيبين واصحابه الغر الميامين ما اتصلت عين بنظر ووعت اذن بخبر وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد ايها الاخوه الكرام اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلن فان الله جل وعلا امرنا بالتقوى كما جاء في سوره ال عمران يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وفي بدايه سوره النساء يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وفي نهايه سوره الاحزاب يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله منها جميعا My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Allah رب العزة والجلال said in سورة البقرة فإن لم تفعلوا ولن تفعلوا فاتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة أعدت للكافرين If we focus at the end of this verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us with this statement that have the fear of the hell fire, the fire in the hell. Alati waquduha nasu wal hijara. The igniting fuel of that hell fire would be the mankind and the stones. Uiddat lil kafirin. This hell fire was created, was prepared for the hell uh, for those who are disbelievers. those who are kuffar Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal through this verse proves and it will remain so until the day of judgment that hell fire jahannam exists anyone who is in denial of it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with him amen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna jahannam kanat mirsada لِطَاغِينَ مَآبًا Indeed, Jahannam has been lying in wait for the transgressors, for the wrongdoers. And it is known as طَاغِينَ or the طَوَاغِيد Those who do not know any limit that are set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are known to transgress those limits set by Allah رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that لِطَّاغِينَ مَآبًا Those who are transgressors, they would be turning and they would be coming to this very hellfire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And the creation of Jahannam as well as the creation of Jannah, they are before the creation of the mankind. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal mentions in Surat Ali Imran, وَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي أُعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ And fear the fire, the hell fire that was created or was prepared for the kafirin, for the disbelievers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the authority of his brother-in-law, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he said that when someone dies, he is shown his destination in the morning as well as in the evening. And if he belongs to the people of Jannah, he will be shown his place among the people of Jannah. And if he is known from the people of the hellfire, if he is from the people of Jahannam, 
he will be shown his place amongst the people of Jahannam. Hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi in his sahih. Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal said in Surah Al-Zumar, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا Allah is saying that and those who disbelieved will be driven to hellfire in groups. Zumar. Hatta idha ja'uha. Until they reach it, its gates are opened. And the khazana or the ones who were guarding, who would be guarding Jahannam, they would say, Alam ya'tikum rusulum minkum? Didn't the messengers from you come to you? Yatluna alaykum. They recited to you, Ayati rabbikum, the verses of your Lord. وَيُنذِرُونَكُمْ And continue to warn you. لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا About this meeting. The meeting in Jahannam. They would say, the people of Jahannam would say, قَالُوا بَلَا وَلَكِنْ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ الْعَذَابِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ They would agree. No matter how many times in this very world, they would deny the existence of Jahannam, no matter how many times they deny Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, no matter how many times they deliberately disbelieve in Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, even denying the existence of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day, they would say, yes, the messengers came to us. They warned us of the last day. They warned us of Jannah and Jahannam, of, 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 of Jahannam. And they gave us the glad tidings of Jannah. Yet, we did not disbelieve. We did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We did not believe in the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One would argue that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died 1400 plus years ago. Who are the messengers? The answer to this, everyone who claims to be from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you claim to be Muslim, it is upon you to convey the message of Islam. Even if you know something little, even if you know a surah that you recite in the salah, so that they do not have the upper hand over you on the day of judgment, because the kuffar would also complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying that no one came to us to give, give us the message of Islam. The reality is that, that in this day and age, we are bound to deliver the message of Islam by any means necessary. Be careful, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam of that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قِيلَ ادْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا فَبِئْسَ مَثْوَى الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ It would be said to them that ادْخُلُوا Enter through the doors of Jahannam wherein you would be there for eternity. فَبِئْسَ مَثْوَى الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ What a wretched place that would be. Especially for those who are arrogant because People in this day and age, unfortunate reality is that even from the Muslims, we would see how they are in denial of Jannah and Jahannam simply because they want to see it through their naked eyes. Allahul Musta'an. Allah is saying Jannah and Jahannam exist. Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. Allah is also saying in Surah Al-Hijr, وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَمَوْعِدُهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ لَهَا سَبْعَةُ أَبْوَابِ لِكُلِّ بَابٍ مِّنْهُمْ جُزْءٌ مَقْسُومٌ And indeed, Jahannam is promised place, is the promised place for those who are from the transgressors. Every one of the ones, every one of them, the ones who are destined for Jahannam would be entering into Jahannam. No matter how much best excuses that we can provide for them. Allah is saying that for every gate, there would be people designated to enter through. لِكُلِّ بَابٍ مِّنْهُمْ جُزْءٌ مَقْسُومٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Balad, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا هُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ عَلَيْهِمْ نَارٌ مُؤْصَدَةٌ And those who disbelieved in our ayat, in our signs, those are the companions of the left, أصحاب المشأمة. In another occasion, in another uh, surah, in other chapters of Al-Quran Al-Karim, they are also known as Ashabu Shimal. Allah is saying, Alayhim naru mu'sada. Over them will be the fire that will be closing them in. 
It's like when you have an umbrella, you are protected from the sunlight. You are protecting yourself from the heat of the sun. Imagine the umbrella is covering you and imagine that is the fire. That is how it would be. You are covered with the fire circle. You can't get out of it. You can't jump over the line or the circle of the fire. That would be the reality of the people of Jahannam. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal also said, نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُوْقَدَةِ أَلَّتِي تَطَّلِعُ عَلَى الْأَفْئِدَةِ إِنَّهَا عَلَيْهِمْ مُؤْصَدَةِ فِي عَمَدٍ مُمَدَّدَةِ those who know this surah, you would know. This is from Surah Al-Humazah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Hutama, which is one of the names of Jahannam, which is one of the names of hell. Allah is saying that it is the fire of Allah. It is eternally fueled. Which mounts directed at their hearts. Indeed, it will be closed down upon them in extended columns. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the authority of Abu Huraira When the month of Ramadan begins and the gates of Jannah are, uh, are opened, the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained. That is the only moment you would find the doors of Jahannam are closed. Other than that, the whole year that we are going through, every day the gate is open and it is ongoing. There are levels, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, with regards to Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Innal munafiqeena fi darki al min al nar The lowest level of Jahannam or the hellfire would be designated for the munafiqeen, for the hypocrites. Allah is saying, walan tajida lahum nasira. You shall never find for them any helper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and for all our degrees, meaning the position resulting from what they have done. If you have done good deeds, then your rankings would be or levels would be going up. From level 1 to the level 7. That is in Jannah and even level 8 in Jannah. Whereas it would be below 0 when it comes to Jahannam. That is known as Darakat. For Jannah, Darajat, for Nar, or for Jahannam, Darakat. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Allah said, أَفَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ بَاءَ بِسَخَطٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَمَأْوَاهُ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ هُمْ دَرَجَاتٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with regards to the capacity and the depth of Jahannam, listen to what he said. كَلَّا إِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّنْ دَكَّا وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah is saying that كَلَّا No When the earth has been leveled, pounded and crushed and your Lord has come and the angels صَفًّا صَفًّا Rank upon rank and brought within view on that day, be Jahannam, the hellfire, the hell itself. Yawma idhin yatadhakkarul insan. Man will remember on that day. Wa anna lahu dhikra. But how, what good to him will be of remembrance when Jahannam is already within your eyesight? No matter how hard you try to say Astaghfirullah, it will not work. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us opportunities, Take advantage of it to beg for his forgiveness, to beg for his mercy and to ask Allah's tawfiq so that we continuously do the a'mal al-saliha, the good actions. Jahannam, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah said about the people of Jahannam and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send the people to Jahannam, the ones who are destined for Jahannam, Jahannam would be asked. يَوْمَ نَقُولِ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلِ امْتَلَأْتِي we will say to Jahannam, are you filled? Jahannam would say, are there more? We are complaining about the hot temperature in this day and age. Jahannam would say, are there more? A hadith that is worth mentioning by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Jahannam will be brought on that day. It will have 70,000 rains with 70,000 angels drawing it by each rain. 
That's the enormity of Jahannam. That's the capacity and depth of Jahannam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that and his meaning the kafir's seat in the Jahannam is as much as the distance between Mecca and Medina. Talking about 450 kilometers between Mecca and Medina. That calculation would not work at that time. It is just to give you how enormous and how depth Jahannam would be. Even one person's seat would be the one who is kafir, who is disbeliever, his seat would be like the distance between Mecca and Medina. May Allah protect us all from such punishment. Allahumma ameen. Abu Hurairah ta'ala anhu said, While we were in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we heard a terrible sound. Thereupon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you know what that sound is? The Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in said, Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know best. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that that is a stone which was thrown into Jahannam 70 years ago and has been constantly falling until now when it finally reached the bottom. That is Jahannam for us. Abu Hurra radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that ishtakati naru ila rabbiha Jannah and Jahannam, they were having an argument with each other. Jahannam said, I have been distinguished by the proud and the haughty. Jannah said, what is the matter with me that only the meek and the humble and the downtrodden and the simple enter me? Meaning the ones who are poor, the ones who have nothing in this dunya. Yet due to their good actions, they will be entered into Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Jannah, You are the means of my mercy. Anti rahmati. Arhabu bihi man asha. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement to Jannah. That you are the means of my mercy whereby I show mercy to those of my servants whomsoever I wish. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Jahannam, Anta azabi. Wa'adhibu bihi man asha. You are the means of punishment whereby I punish those of my servants whosoever I wish. Both of you will be full by the people. Jahannam will not be filled up until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his foot over it. Then Jahannam will say, enough, enough, enough. That is Jahannam for us. At which point it will be filled up all of its parts integrated together. Khadim Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jahannam will continue to ask, is there anything more until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place his foot thereon, then it will say enough, by your honor, wa bi'izzatik. And some of its parts will draw closer together. This hadith is recorded by Sahih Muslim. The hadith earlier from Abu Huraira recorded by Sahih Muslim. We mentioned about the fuel of Jahannam, that the mankind would be one of the fuels of Jahannam, the stones would be one of the fuels of Jahannam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said that even the jinn would be from the fuels of Jahannam. As Allah said in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرَّوا رَشَدًا وَأَمَّا الْقَاسِطُونَ فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبًا the woodlock that we use, jinn would be utilized as, as, like, uh, as woodlock in the hellfire. And it would be igniting it. And the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, it is pretty clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Tahrim, he said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. This particular verse is reminding us that we need to protect ourselves as well as our family members, the people who are dear to us from the punishment of Jahannam, especially the fire in Jahannam. As there are many ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the people in Jahannam. <coughs> And these Jahannam, these Jahannam that we are talking about, what the punishment would be through the heat as well as through the cold. There are guards, there are angels who are guarding it that are not known to disobey. Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, as per the verse in Surah Al-Tahrim, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. 
also from the igniting fuels of Jahannam would be the false gods. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّكُمْ وَمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ حَصَبُ جَهَنَّمَا أَنْتُمْ لَهَا وَارِدُونَ لَوْ كَانَ هَاُولَائِهِ آلِهَةً مَا وَرَدُوهَا وَكُلٌّ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Indeed, you, meaning the kuffar, the disbelievers, and what you worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are hasabu jahannam, the firewood of jahannam. Antum laha waridun, you will be coming to enter it, meaning you would be entered into jahannam. Allah is saying that, لَوْ كَانَ هَاُولَاءِ آلِهَةً مَا وَرَدُوهَا Had these false deities been actual gods, وَكُلٌّ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They would not have come to it, but all are eternal therein, meaning in Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anbiya, He said, وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِلْغَاوِينَ وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ هَلْ يَنْصُرُونَكُمْ أَوْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ فَكُبْكِبُوا فِيهَا هُمْ وَالْغَاوُونَ وَجُنُودُ إِبْلِيسَ أَجْمَعُونَ Allah is saying that and Jahannam will be brought forth for the deviators. Al-Ghawun. And from the deviators, Allahul Musta'an, even those who do not stick to the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa upon the understanding of the Sahaba, Tabi'in and Atba'u Tabi'in, don't think that you can get away from the punishment of Jahannam. Jahannam's punishment will touch you <coughs> due to the fact that you are disobeying Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And you are using Islam whenever it suits you. Allah is saying that وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ To the kuffar, that it would be said to them that أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ Where are those you used to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we are seeing the places of worship other than the masajid where you would see all sorts of statues, all sorts of images are there. مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ هَلْ يَنْصُرُونَكُمْ أَوْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ Can they help you or help themselves? So they will be overturned into Jahannam. They and the deviators and the soldiers of Iblis together. So be careful, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. The verses are in Surah Al Shu'ara. With regards to the intensity of Jahannam, the fire in Jahannam, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Your ordinary fire is one of 70 portions of Jahannam. The fire of the dunya. One of 70 portions of Jahannam. Someone commented saying that, Ya Rasulullah, would it be, meaning the fire that is of the dunya, not sufficient to burn the wrongdoers? The fire of the dunya. Would it not be sufficient to burn the wrongdoers, the ones who disobeyed Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone? At that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jahannam has 69 more portions than the fire of this dunya. So stop complaining about the heat of the dunya. We can't tolerate the fire of this dunya. Put your hand, put your hand on the fire. Test yourself. You won't be able to tolerate that. Then what about the fire of Jahannam that is 69 times hotter than the fire of the dunya? Rasulullah continued saying that and all of them are as hot as this worldly fire. Hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari in his sahih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَعَنَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ سَعِيرًا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا لَا يَجِدُونَ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed the disbelievers and has prepared for them the blazing fire. Sa'ir is another name of Jahannam. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا They will be there for eternity. لَا يَجِدُونَ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا They will never find there any helper or any ally. These verses are in Surah Al-Ahzab. In Surah Al-Inshiqaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُوا ثُبُورًا وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا But as for those, as for he who is given his record behind his back, he will cry. He will cry out for destruction and enter to burn in a blaze. That is Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Furqan, he said, 
بل كذبوا بالساعة وأعتدنا لمن كذب بالساعة سعيرا Rather they have disbelieved and they denied a sa'a the hour. Allah is saying, وَأَعْتَدْنَا And we have prepared لِمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالسَّاعَةِ سَعِيرًا The ones who have disbelieved in the hour, for them we have prepared سَعِيرًا Blazing fire. Allah is saying, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ If they have seen that سَعِير or the blazing fire, مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ from far, سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا they will hear its fury and the roaring of it. وَإِذَا أُلْقُوا مِنْهَا And when they are thrown into a narrow place therein, مَكَانًا ضَيِّقًا مُقَرَّنِينَ دَعَوْ هُنَالِكَ ثُبُورًا They will be bound in chains. They will cry out thereupon for destruction. Like they would want a quick end. Allah will not let it happen. They would constantly be punished. They would be burned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them back to the way they were before they receive the punishment of Jahannam. And it would be so until, the, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا تدعو اليوم ثبورا واحدا وادعو ثبورا كثيرا The kuffar would be said, they, they would be told that do not cry this day for one destruction but cry for much destruction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Waqi'ah he said وَأَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ فِي سَمُومٍ وَحَمِيمٍ And the companions of the left, what are the companions of the left? What do you know about them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they will be in a scorching fire and a scalding water. That is what they will drink and that is how they will be punished with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Qari'ah he said that وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُمُّهُ هَاوِيَةً وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا هِيَةً نَارٌ حَامِيَةً Allah is saying that as for the one whose scales are light فَأُمُّهُ هَاوِيَةً his refuge would be an abyss what is the abyss? نَارٌ حَامِيَةً it is a fire that is intensely hot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Muddathir he said سَأُصْلِهِ سَقَرْ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سَقَرْ لَا تُبْقِي وَلَا تَذَرْ لَوَّاحَةٌ لِلْبَشَرْ عَلَيْهَا تِسْعَةَ عَشَرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I will drive him into the Saqar which is another name of Jahannam. What do you know about Saqar? Allah said, لا تبقي ولا تذر It doesn't let anything remain and it doesn't leave anything uh, unburned. للبشر, it also alters, meaning blackens the skin due to the burning. عليها تسعة عشر Upon it, meaning upon Jahannam there are 19 angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on the authority of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the most privileged man among the dwellers of earth will be brought from amongst the people of Jahannam on the day of resurrection. He will be died in the fire but once. Then it will be said to him like he would be dipped in, uh, dipped in it. O son of Adam, Yabn Adam, have you ever seen good at all? The person would say, has any pleasure come to you? He would say, no by Allah. Ya Rabbi, no. Then the most miserable of the people in this world will be brought from amongst the people of Jannah and he will be dipped into the dipping of Jannah. It will be said to him, O son of Adam, have you ever seen any misery? And has any hardship ever come to you? The person would say, La Wallah, O my Lord. No, I swear by Allah, no misery has ever come to me, nor did I see any hardship. Even the shade of Jahannam, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it would cause us to think twice when we are sinning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَظِلِّمْ مِنْ يَحْمُومْ لَا بَارِدٌ وَلَا كَرِيمٌ In Surah Al-Waqi'ah, there will be in scorching fire and scalding water and a shade of black smoke, neither cool nor beneficial. That is the shade of Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mursalat, he said, وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ إِنْ طَلِقُوا إِلَى مَا كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ Woe to those on that day, the ones who are liars. They will be told to go to the thing that they were lying upon. That is Jahannam. إِنْ طَلِقُوا إِلَى ظِلٍ ذِي ثَلَاثِ شُعَبٍ Go to the place where you have the dhil or the shade having three columns. لَا ظَلِيلٍ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنَ اللَّهَبِ no cool shade and availing not against the flame. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding these sparks 
of Jahannam, the fire in Jahannam, Allah said, Innaha tarmi bi sharrin kal qasr. Indeed, it throws his sparks as huge as a fortress. Ka'annahu jimalatun sufr. Allah is saying that as if they are yellowish black camels. The effects upon the present world of Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, Rasul uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari in Sahih. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, Jahannam complained to its Lord that, O oh my Lord, my different parts eat each other up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed it to take two breaths. فَأَذِنَ لَهُ بِنَفَسَيْنِ one is in the winter and the other is in the summer. This is the cause of the severe heat that you see in this day and age and the bitter cold that you experience when it is the cold season. Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala anhum reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the fever is from the breath of Jahannam. When people go through the fever. So cool it with water. That's why we would see in our uh, uh, previous generation, how our grandparents used to pour the cold water so that the fever calms down a bit. This hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, while the Prophet, uh, 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 rather it is an action reported by Abu Dharr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was on a journey, he said, regarding the performance of Salat al-Dhuhr, wait until it gets cooler. The moment that you have the time of Salat al-Dhuhr kicking in, you cannot start Salat al-Dhuhr immediately. Rather, it is the command of Rasulullah that it gets a bit cooler so that we pray Salat al-Dhuhr afterwards. He said the same again until the shade of the hillocks extended and then he said, delay Salat al-Dhuhr. Prayer uh, Salat al-Dhuhr until it gets colder for the severity of the heat. Even every day, Salat al-Dhuhr that we pray, every day we have the heat. We don't experience it, but that is also from Jahannam, the heat that we may experience. Hadith is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi. نَفَعَنِ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتُ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ وَبِهَذِي سَيِّدَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَمٍ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَتُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا في الدين والدنيا والآخرة يا سميع الدعاء my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the time that we are going through with regards to the hot temperature, consider it an opportunity to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, for the mercy, and have a habit of being in the sujood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still letting you live in this, in this part of the world. And it also means that we need to ask Allah for forgiveness because due to our sins, we are going through the calamities that we, uh, we may experience in this dunya. So do not forget to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness of your sins. And also, very soon, inshallah, from Monday, we'll have the first 10 day of Dhul Hijjah. There are opportunities that we can uh, 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 take advantage of. And that is that the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than the last 10 days of Ramadan. Quite often we misuse that. So if you are in a, in a habit of doing the ibadat constantly, if you are in a habit of doing the uh, uh, udhiyah, for example, you know what to do. And always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more opportunities he gives us, he gives us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And we are under the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially, specifically because we are believers. We claim to follow Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر ذنوب جميعا. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Have that yaqeen that it is only Allah who forgives the sins. 
have that certainty that it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only does he forgive the sin, but also he showers with the mercy. And that is what we are missing in this day and age due to the life that lifestyle that we're having. And that is more focused on the dunya rather than more focused on the akhirah. So take advantage of the time that you are given before it is too late. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our sins. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all, our children, our wives, our mothers, our next generations from the fitna of the dunya as well as from the fitna of al-akhirah. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the husn al-khatima. Allahumma ameen. Ibad Allah, i'lamu anna Allah amarakum bis salatu wa salami ala nabiyyi wa qala fi muhkum al-tanzeel. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabiyyi. Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. وعن النبي بن مالك رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صلى عليه صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه عشر صلوات وحط عنه عشر خطيئات رواه الإمام أحمد في مسنده فصلوا وسلموا على سيد الأولين والآخرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ورض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين الذين قضوا بالحق وبه كانوا يعدلون أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم بعفوك ومنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الكفر والكافرين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين المستضعفين في كل بلدان المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم كل المستضعفين عونا وظهيرا وهيئ لهم من لدنك وليا ونصيرا اللهم عليك باليهود المعتدين وسائر الكفرة الظالمين اللهم اقذف الرعب في قلوبهم وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا يرد عن القوم المجرمين يا قوي يا عزيز ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تقل اغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا اتمم لنا نورنا واعف عنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الابرار عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وانهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون